During the course of the pandemic, we've been listening to Americans through Zoom to get their thoughts on COVID, the economy, and how the government is handling it all. On Friday, we checked back in with six of them. Who feels like we are in a better place now than we were a year ago? Show of hands. No one believes we're in a better spot now. Unfortunately, I don't think that our public um, servants are actually, they're kind of on a lag with the science. I was not vaxxed, had COVID. I didn't even know I had it. I had the sniffles for two days and body aches. And if I hadn't lost my sense of smell, I wouldn't have known the difference. It's clearly not um, as horrible as perhaps it was described. For some, it has been, and I'm very sorry for that. But um, for a lot of us who do take care of ourselves and everything and, and are younger, we need to go in and live our lives. And public science has not caught up with that yet. How many people know someone who has died from COVID or been hospitalized with COVID? So Mildred, you raised your hand there. Do you have a different perspective when you hear the descriptions of saying it, it's not that bad? I can't really say that it's not that bad. I think it is bad. Um, I think this whole country is suffering from COVID fatigue at this point. Um, mm -hmm. It has become um, confusing and depressing. Um, I'm an elderly person myself and um, a cancer survivor. And that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and took the vaccine and the booster. You originally told us a year or so ago that you you didn't want to be a guinea pig. You had concern about taking the vaccine. What changed your mind? Uh, a lot of my friends who had gone ahead and taken the vaccine, and I saw where they had done well. Um, and I want to be around, you know, there's never any guarantee, but I want to be around to see my grandkids. So why don't you think, now that you have that tool, in your disposal, why don't you think we're in a better place? Well, I don't know if we are in a better place as a country. We're, we're still very divided on this whole COVID thing. Go ahead, Jill. I was of the opinion that when people got vaccinated, they would let their guard down. They would go out and congregate. And I'm a football fan and it makes my skin crawl when I watch the games and I see so many people together because that's exactly what it did. They got vaccinated and they thought, we're fine. We can go out and do all the things we normally do. And that's the dangerous part. Now I'm unvaccinated, but I wouldn't dream of not wearing a mask. The things that I see going on in America, it makes my skin crawl because people think we're out of the woods and we're not. So when you hear President Biden say, this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated, Jill, do you feel like he's talking about you? Not at all. Not at all, because I work with someone who's vaccinated and has had the booster and they've had COVID three times. So I'm not buying that. Jorge, you, you are nodding your head in full agreement with Jill. Oh, 100%. I think that's part of the problem that we've had is the misinformation. Actually, uh, studies have already shown that cloth masks are not effective at all. That's right. The quality no, of your mask, not, let me, your, let me, the quality not, of your mask matters a lot. The quality of the mask. And they didn't say that at first. They said, oh, just wear a mask and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So I think when, when your leader is saying one thing and, and, and then it's not true, um, that begin, you begin to question that. People that don't want to get vaccinated have their own reasons. And I don't think it has anything to do with President Trump. And to your point, former President Trump has gotten vaccinated and boosted, he says. Um, so he has now endorsed it. But Chelsea, jump in here. How are you feeling? Are you feeling more confident these days? No, I'm not really. I'm still worried about getting sick. You know, I'm fully vaxxed. I got my booster. I wear my mask. Um, but I agree, like the messaging has been really confusing. Um, and I don't blame people at all who haven't gotten vaccinated because the story was the pandemic will be over. But the truth of the matter is people do still get sick even though they're vaccinated. So I think that things are just as bad as they were when the pandemic started. And Jorge, walking into the classroom, you were concerned as a teacher about getting exposed. I mean, do, do you feel like the safety guidelines for classrooms are clearly communicated? 
In Texas, we are. We don't wear masks. We don't, you don't have to get a vaccine. You get a vaccine if you want. It's, you take care of yourself. And, and that's how it should be. You have got to have your own personal convictions and you follow them. If you choose not to get vaccinated, then you're choosing to live with those consequences. The things that I've done thus far, it's protected me and I've not gotten sick. And if I do, that's something I have to live with. But just right now, I just feel like I have a choice and my choice is just to not do it. We are a year into unified democratic control of the House, of the Senate, of the executive branch. Do you feel any differently? Do you feel that Washington understands what all of you are experiencing out there? Beth is shaking her head no. I mean, so many of you are. But have you always felt that way? Or is there a new level of sort of skepticism about Washington? Yeah, I think so. I, I really had such high hopes for this administration when they came in. And um, it's just been one disaster after another. Um, Afghanistan, inflation, <laughs> take your pick. I just don't understand. I thought this was gonna be a president for the people of the people. And I just feel like it's one, you know, hurdle after another that we all have to climb. Chelsea, I saw you raise your hand. I do agree that fundamentally for me, nothing has changed. I think that I am more skeptical now. My life has not improved. COVID has not improved. Biden has not, you know, stuck to any of his promises. Um, I don't think any anyone in Washington is really for working people. And that has been mm -hmm. so clear this year. That point on working people, there has been at least $2 trillion pumped into the economy. There have been child care tax credits. When President Biden took office, he sent out those $1,400 checks. There's been all this money pumped in with the intention of helping working people. Are you saying it just hasn't made a difference in your life? Um, certainly not in my life personally. Sandy, do you feel that way? I mean, I'm looking at a $300 ta a tax credit per month for each child. Um, the $1,400 checks that President Biden handed out. I I'm looking at all these lists of things that were pumped out there with the intention of helping everyday people. Do you agree with Chelsea that it just hasn't made a difference in your life? It really hasn't made a difference at all, at least in my life. Uh, sure, it may have helped some people temporarily, but uh, ultimately what everything's caused with all this money pumped into the economy, it's caused inflation. Well, uh, economists would tell you a lot of that has to do with just the shocks from the pandemic. If, if you got a shot, if you went out and got the vaccine because it would help the economy, you know, is that an effective selling point for you versus telling you you're going to get sick or not? That doesn't help the price of bacon right now. Um, can I see a show of hands? Do any of you feel like the economy has gotten better in the past year? <laughs> All of you are saying no, even though the jobs picture is brighter, even though the direction of the economy and recovery is happening. Are you all concerned about rising prices and inflation? I go to the grocery store now, I'm, I'm paying double the amount that I was paying, um, you know, even a few months ago, uh, everything's gone up. My granddaughter loves bacon, by the way, and I can barely afford bacon. <laughs> and. Whose fault do you think that is? I mean, it's the Federal Reserve that controls interest rates. It's their job to control inflation. Do you blame the president? Do you blame the central bankers? Or do you blame, what, just Congress? I know the Federal Reserve is talking about, they're talking about uh, increasing the interest rate. Um, but I think it's a combination. Um, Congress is worthless. <laughs> oh, you don't even want me to start on Congress. I actually do, because this is one of the things. In President Biden's first year, one of the things they say they are most proud of is this historic investment in infrastructure and the fact they got Republicans and Democrats to sign on to it. Even with that, you still say they're worthless. I do, because there's so much more that needs to be done. Like what? What do you need? 
Um, I need for the price of bacon to go down. <laughs> How about that? I need for the government to stop spending so much money on um, things that are worthless. That like are what? Gonna, that are not going to benefit the people. I mean, they're sending out uh, N95 masses, you know, to cover people's faces. Somebody's making it and somebody's making money off of that. You know, I, you know, that to me, that's crazy. They're also sending out COVID tests mm -hmm. um, for people to do COVID testing at home. Waste of money. The administration would say these are the things that will help keep the economy going because then you won't have to stay home if you don't catch COVID. It takes 12 days to get the test in the mail, another 12 days to get your results. That's 24 days. <laughs> well, these at-home tests, are supposed to be quick, just a few minutes. Here's what's wrong with our administration. They, like she was saying, here you are sending all these tests, sending the masks. So I'm going to put more money into this economy. I'm going to keep spending more money and, and it's going to fix everything. No, inflation is going to hit eight, nine percent. We're going to be back to Jimmy Carter. And we know what happened to Jimmy Carter. Um, you can't keep doing that. I almost feel like the administration came in and said, you know what, we're going to do everything opposite of what Trump did. There will be more of our Listening to America segment Monday on our CBS News streaming network during Red and Blue. And the full conversation will be on our website at facethenation.com.